Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about is standard cards too expensive? And the answer is yes, it is too expensive. Now before I begin, I will compare it to other hobbies. And the other hobbies I mainly am interested in at this particular moment, I do go fishing, but that's like already over, that season is kind of like over. I do not go hunting, um, I'm not a fan of hunting. I do understand it, but I grew up in Pennsylvania, so in Pennsylvania everyone had like hunting licenses when they were like 16. At least where I lived. So yeah, anyway, I will compare it to uh, video games as well as uh, my other hobby, um, coding, coding I guess is a hobby, running, um, and golf. I guess golf would be the most expensive of the hobbies. So for video games, um, magic is not a great function of value. Uh, for standard, at least. Standard decks are too expensive. Um, in a video game, you buy the video game and then you play the video game and that's it. But in standard decks, when you buy the deck, the deck is going to change. Not just rotation. I'm not talking about just rotation. I'm talking about the meta. So some decks, assuming no cards are rotating in or out, um, some decks are very good against other decks, but then once the meta changes, into a maybe let's say it goes from fast to slow then different decks are going to be good maybe mid range is good against you know slow that week but it might not be good against slow the next week so not only are the do the cards in your deck have to change but also the deck quality changes uh, that being even like if you look at Abzan it's dominated for a very long time but now people are playing blue red or they're playing Naya at least in my locals, or red deck wins, and that changes how your deck does. So to evolve the deck, you have to buy new cards, you have to do new stuff, and at the end of the day, it is expensive. Um, it's very expensive. Now, video games, you have something called downloadable content. Not identical, in my opinion, because you don't actually need the downloadable content to enjoy the game. For Magic, and a lot of people, a lot of people do not enjoy the game when they are losing. And in their minds, and this is psychology, if only I could afford a better deck, I wouldn't lose as much and I would have a better time. That's not, you know, that's not necessarily true, but it's also not false, right? So yeah, having an optimized deck um, is a lot of people's goals in standard and that's understandable, but that's also very expensive. Now, um, talk about rotation. So your video game is never gonna like, rotate out. Maybe there will be a new version of Final Fantasy you want to play, but you can always play your Final Fantasy online with other players. Well, for Magic Gathering, you your deck, let's say the black, mono, black devotion deck. Who is playing that deck right now? Who can you play that deck against? Maybe you play against Modern, but you would just get steamrolled, right? But if you're playing like Super Smash Brothers, like on the um, 3DS, you don't need to buy like a new system like or like a new video game to play keep playing on Mario Kart Mario Kart on the 3DS I still play that all the time online and it's great I get tremendous value but your mono black devotion deck that's not that great right now um, so that's video games uh, the next comparison I have is the running and coding but that produces extra value for your job so I don't think magic transfers these skills all that well. So like if you're playing, if you're a really great magic player, yeah, you learn some math, you learn some um, planning and strategy, but to transfer that skills into something that can go, you can go to like a real job interview and say like, so like I would, I would say this, um, and I've seen a discussion about it. So leave a comment below if you feel like you would actually tell the job interviewer, hey, I play Magic the Gathering as one of your hobbies. So the question is like, what is your hobby? I am much more likely to say I like coding, I like running, than get to Magic the Gathering, right? If that's the question, that's a very common interview question. I interview a lot of people, and that's one of the questions I always ask. What is your hobby? And I have never heard Magic the Gathering. I've probably interviewed close to 100, maybe 200 people. I've never heard Magic the Gathering. You always hear like running or fishing or hunting. Uh, I'm, again, we're in Texas, right? So yeah, um, so that's very different because yeah, you spend money in coding, you sp I buy raspberry pies, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but like you build stuff with it. Um, I do like really nerdy activities, but at the end of the day, it does make me a little better at my actual job. 
Uh, Magic Gathering is more of a relaxation. A lot of times I'm playing decks that don't win. <laughs> Simply, I'm just having fun. I'm playing the mill deck, by, by the way, right now. Maybe I'll do a deck tech later this week. So uh, the next one is golf. So golf, I also view it as kind of a social function. Um, most of my friends who play golf are, you know, they have jobs, they're young professionals like me. And playing golf, I don't actually enjoy it very much. I enjoy the socializing part of golf, not the hitting the ball and traveling, you know, m multiple distances to get to the ball to hit it again. But I enjoy the talking and the banter and just hanging out with a bunch of, hanging out with three of your good friends and you're just having fun. That's fun to me. And that's kind of like magic, but magic has something very unique about it. Um, its price point is as expensive as golf. And I say this because every month, if every month you want to change your deck, that is about your golf fee. And outside your golf fee, after you invest in the initial clubs and, you know, the balls and stuff like that, um, the cart, if you have a cart, you don't really, you just pay the club fee. And the club fee, at least in Humble, is about the price of a good deck. Um, a good deck, I'm assuming in standard, is 200 to $300. And I'm assuming that it's a tri-color deck. I'm not assuming it's mono red. I'm not assuming it's um, a different color that wouldn't be necessarily... I'm assuming it's a tier one optimized expensive deck at 200 to 300 dollars and that's about the same price as golf so magic standard standard magic in my opinion is a very expensive hobby given rotation given meta changes and given you know just um how crazy these cards are and these cards have real money value to them that you can sell them to your store maybe at a discount or a at you know, a small percentage, but you can sell them at your store very cheaply, very easily. If I wanted to sell my golf cart, which I don't have one, just a hypo, then I don't know who would buy it, like, or what percentage. But yeah, so I would say Magic the Gathering standard as a hobby is relatively expensive. I've actually crunched the numbers and it's as expensive as golf. It's more expensive than coding or running. So running has like, you have uh, fees, uh, to run at marathons, half marathons, things of that nature. Uh, coding, you have to go to coding camp, you have to take coding classes and do things of that nature. But um, yeah, relative, and video games, it is way more expensive than video games. Um, just way more, because like I don't, I, I love playing the same video game over it and over it again, but I do not like um, having to change my decks out every month or every two months depending on how the meta changes or having my whole deck crash into no money after rotation. Um, that doesn't really feel that good to me. Anyway, bye guys.